We're joined now by Professor James Byrne from the University of Lethbridge. Hello James, and I know that you're working with the AGU at the moment on planning a number of international meetings that address issues of climate change and humanity. I just wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about that please. Essentially what we have right now is a population you know, uh, that, that is quite familiar with what climate change is, climate change impacts. And they know the solutions out there, but really the complexity of solutions are causing problems, I think, for everybody. Sure, we can build wind turbines, we can put up solar panels, but is it the most effective approach? Um, I would say not really. Um, you know, we need to integrate those approaches. We need to have many disciplines involved. And we need actually, beyond the science community, we need communicators, we need social scientists to help us with policies, plans, you know, integrating those into society. And I wonder if you could elaborate further on what some of the biggest challenges are in this quite significant undertaking. Well, I think it's, it's actually bringing together that multidisciplinary community. Um, for example, you know, research scientists might say we, we have to stop population growth. Uh, but the population scientists, you know, the researchers that study population will say we can't stop population. You know, the, the, the birth rate stabilized almost globally. What we've really got is a whole bunch of young and middle and old age people who are going to grow a lot longer and or live a lot longer and so you know the population is going to we're going to 10 billion whether we like it or not you know so we have to account for that population and where we're going to where we're going to keep that population how we're going to feed that population so you know that's part of the solutions can you tell us as well how you can further disseminate the information that come out from these meetings and other scientific meetings to the general population through education and through other means as well? Well, that, that's an exciting part of this is, is beyond, you know, scientists are about refereed publication. And we're going to do refereed publications out of these series of conferences. But more important, we're going to create education programs. Education programs that is, are readily available at very low cost to professors to, in colleges and universities and high school teachers so that we can get that information out there. We'll have public education programs uh, you know, that, that will be readily available as well. Uh, and we, we're, you know, by, by preparing that, by preparing all those education materials and providing education advice and, and, and development, we're preparing a much broader population. Last question for you, James. In, in your opinion, what's the biggest innovations that are necessary in order to enable us to communicate climate change more effectively? I think one of the biggest innovations will be really integrating, you know, across across sectors in society. Uh, again, you know, everybody thinks windmills and solar panels are the are the solution. Windmills and solar panels, windmills and solar panels are going to be important, but often they're not the number one step. You know, there's going to be much more effective things that we can do. Um, you know, can we, can we, we're going to have to prepare for some change, that's adaptation. Um, so mitigation, trying to reduce the amount of climate change we're seeing, um, you know, we integrate those because we don't want a mitigation project to maybe interfere with an adaptation project and we may find in many cases say for example floods we may provide better protection for homes or buildings that are in a floodplain when we really discover that you know under 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 uh, climate change there's just no way we can protect those areas you know so so we're gonna have to look at at you know so many multidisciplinary analyses uh, to to ensure that we make the right choices because it's going to be a big investment and we don't want to waste any of that investment. Thanks very much James for talking to us today for AGU TV. Thanks so much for having me. That was Professor James Byrne from the University of Lethbridge talking to us here on AGU TV.